Welcome to the Widow's Well. Today I want to speak about faith and works, the very well-known and loved part about faith that James gives us uh, will be my starting point today and then I will also look at the Jerusalem Council um, which is in Acts 15 which gives us a uh, good answer as to what fa faith uh, should entail for specifically a Christian. Now, in James 2, um, let us read that part. Faith without works is dead. So we know that we are saved by our faith. And the faith comes by hearing the word of God. To be able to hear the word of God, you need to be of his sheep, because his sheep hear his voice. And... Um, if you then hear the word of God, you will faith will grow in you. Faith is a gift of God, but that faith can grow as you hear the word and as you have your mind renewed in order to um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may have the mind of Christ. Now let us read there from verse 14 to verse 28 in, in the book of James chapter 2. It says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have works, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abram our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abram believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messages and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Jesus tells us in Matthew 7 very clearly that the way is narrow. He says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many that go in by it. In Matthew 7 verse 21, he goes on to say, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So the many that, that we are told about, the many go on the broad way to destruction. And we can see here from how Jesus describes what they do, that they are prophesying in his name, casting demons out and doing wonders in his name. And so this, it, this describes masses of people in assemblies where they give lip service to following Jesus Christ. Um, but they they are said to practice lawlessness. But now I want to point out with this example that James says, please note that this example of works 
has to do with loving the neighbor. It is not the, the works of religion. It is not, for example, the works of following festivals of the Old Testament. It is not even keeping the Sabbath. It is not even eating clean foods. It is not, none of those things because for the Christian, they need to focus on learning to love God and their neighbor. And we can see that very clearly in Acts 15. Acts 15 perfectly describes for us why it is wrong to make Christians um, keep Old Testament law. We are placing a burden upon them which they shouldn't have. Let us read Acts 15. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with him, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all the things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, this is very much what we see now with these brothers and sisters coming and telling the um, people in Christian churches that you need to keep the Torah. It's exactly the same that we see in our time. So we see Paul is standing as the advocate um, and this matter needs to be resolved and we need to resolve it in our time also. Again, I, I think this has probably been gone, ongoing uh, from the, the first century when they had the problem with the Judaizers. So it's a continuous battle in every um, generation. We are told to contend for the faith that was handed down to us once and for all. So here we see it in the book of Jude, where he says, uh, contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered by the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we get ungodly men who creep in among us, and they work in two ways. The one way is to focus only on the grace and say we needn't do anything. We, in other words, we we may have these um, huge uh, and sometimes small churches, but it's often in the bigger and the mega churches where it becomes a circus, um, and the people. Take the, use the grace to be lascivious. In other words, to live lawlessly, which is what Jesus said, go away to, from me, you who work iniquity. Because through the fact that they are not trying to obey his commandments unknowingly, they are part of the world system, which is working iniquity. But on the other hand, you get another type that creeps in and takes people cap captive to being under the law of Moses again. And they deny the Lord. You see, they deny his work and they bring another Jesus and their goal is to put you back under the law. So we need to understand these things. So we must hold fast to the faith delivered us and we must learn to walk with the Lord until... We, we mature in our faith, the Jerusalem Council. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, 
you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the wor words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. So we see there that God wants to wanted to visit the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. So he wants to call, call all the lost sheep of Israel back to him, ultimately to spread his name over all the earth so that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of God. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. He is telling them the, the, the basic things, the things that would help set them on the correct path um, where they lived among the, these pagans. So there were basically four things that they had, had to do because these were problems in those societies. There was idol worship, which is accompanied by gross sexual immorality and um, eating of blood and unclean eating, things strangled and unclean clean things. And then he says, for Moses had throughout many generations those who preach him. In other words, there's a synagogue. So what he's saying is that the converts were to keep to these basic uh, rules and then they were to go to the synagogues to hear Moses read. In other words, they would grow in their faith. And then it goes on in verse 22. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barshabas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia. Greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment, it seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you and our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these ne necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. So this is what 
the Jerusalem Council said is that they were to make a start um, in the um, separation from their ungodly and crooked culture. And it was these four things. And it said, the Holy Spirit does not want to lay a greater burden than the necessary things. So it was the basic things with the idea that they would grow in their understanding as they attended the synagogue. Now, later in time, there became more and more a split because I, I think it may be because of this troubling of the Judaizers, and that may also even have been the reason why um, eventually the Sabbath was changed to a Sunday. So my understanding about faith and roots is we should allow people, when they turn to the Lord, we should give them time in the Christian faith to grow, and that their, their faith should be in the power of God and not in works. Because if they are immediately um, taught to start doing all sorts of works, their faith does not have time to grow. And then um, when different doctrines come, they don't have a faith. Everything is based in their, in their works of the flesh. Um, and that puffs you up, you see, because you get pride in, in, your, in your fleshly ways. And a good example is this Torah keeping because people take pride in Jewish culture and and ways. Um, and that is just not what Christians are called to do. If someone really can hear the voice of the Lord, even if they are in a lukewarm church, they will be there for a season and then they by themselves will see that there, are, there aren't works being done. There is no fruit. It's just lip service. And they will start to see the errors and they will seek because the Holy Spirit in them will seek diligently. And um, in due time, as they mature, they will not just do the very basic things, but they need lots of time, especially if they are in a culture like the Western culture today, where people really... Um, come almost from uh, idolatrous ways where mammon is worshipped. So that person needs to learn many things. They need to trust the Lord. They need to renew their mind to immediately want them to understand the meat of the word is just, it's very bad. Um, Jesus said to let the wheat and the tears grow together lest you damage the, the immature wheat. So coming and, and and that's exactly what I see is going to happen with these Torah movements that steal believers and um, people who are fervent for the Lord, they are taken into these um, new movements and often these people that lead these movements do not understand grace they, they are themselves still under Moses, even though they may confess Jesus by their mouth, they do not understand. And then they glory in fleshly and carnal things. Now, the moment um, there's a big shaking, the, the, the person does not have um, they, their faith cannot uphold them because they are relying on their works. The moment they do something wrong, they feel God is angry with them and he rejects them. And so love grows cold. It, it becomes fear, fear of punishment. On the other hand, the um, mega churches with their watered down gospel and their tolerance of what is Abomin abominable actually and their tolerance for abominable things they 
or, or so much in error. So, at the, so um, on my channel, I am standing against this um, falling from grace. And I'm trying to warn Christians that they won't fall for it because there are many shakings of the faith and they many people haven't actually studied the scripture and they they are not they have not been obedient and they have to do it now and they they have to find out now why do they believe what they believe so i want to warn them against all those wolves in sheep's clothing that um, the lord warns us about these come with a false jesus and it's all about works there is a false Jesus that's all about faith and there's a false Jesus that's all about works. But we are to follow the narrow way and, and to keep our um, eye on Jesus and follow what he taught us and learn. In due time, we will know that from our trust of the Lord, we will, for example, eventually realize, well, Maybe certain things that I thought in my culture is fine is not fine. And it will start with certain movies and things like that. And eventually we will understand, okay, certain food is just unhealthy for us for certain reasons. But we cannot demand that from each other. Each one must be convinced in his own mind. And then following those things are beneficial but before then we are just creating more religion which is working against faith and is is working in the favor of the enemy i want to warn brothers and sisters who have matured somewhat in the lord of jesus's words in matthew 18 from verse 10 where he says take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven the angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man have come to save that which was lost. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, Assuredly, I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the 99 that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. When people get born again, they're a babe in Christ and many of them are in the Christian churches. Be careful that we are not the one that despises those little ones which Christ has come to seek. This, the scripture says he came to take captivity captive and he has made a way for them. And they are to be in those ch churches and those fellowships for their season. And we should be very, very careful not to look down on them, just like the older brother of the um, parable of the prodigal son. He was angry at his younger brother. Likewise, there is that type of um, looking down upon Christians. We must be careful. We do not always know who is the wheat and the tears. It's only through seeing if they can hear the voice of the shepherd and by their fruit that we will know them. But we cannot just um, despise the churches. Yes, the churches do great error and there is many false doctrines and false teachers. But nevertheless, that is the way that the Lord has made for those sheep to come to him. And we should be careful not to lay burdens on them. For he himself said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And they are little ones, and he helps them bear the yoke. But when we mature, we are able to bear more.